And now, Mr. Crumb's Potato Predicament, written by Anne Renault, illustrated by Felicity Sala. George Crumb loved to cook. He fricasseed and flambéed, boiled and braised, poached and pureed. He made sorbets, soufflés, stews and succotashes, ragouts and goulashes. George loved cooking so much his house ballooned with food. So he opened a restaurant called Crumb's Place and hired a waitress with cheeks round as plums named Gladys. George cooked to his heart's content, and his customers devoured his concoctions. Many considered him to be the best cook in the country. That is, until one day, when in walked a peculiar-looking patron. He wore a purple polka-dotted cravat and a sunflower on his lapel. Filbert P. Horsefeathers is the name, he trumpeted. The P stands for punctilious, and I have a hankering for a heaping helping of potatoes. Just potatoes, said Gladys. Just potatoes, said Filbert. So, with a swish of his apron and a tap on his chef's hat, George got to work. He cut the potatoes into wedges, boiled them, fried them in a dollop of lard, and sprinkled them with salt. Then Gladys set the potatoes down in front of Filbert punctilious horse feathers. Filbert speared a wedge with his fork and peered at it from all sides. Too thick, he said, pursing his lips and pushing his plate away. Well, Huckberry Biscuits, said Gladys. The customer at table five is sending his plate back. Picky, 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 muttered George, who had never before had a customer refuse his cooking. So with another swish of his apron and a tap to his chef's hat, George prepared a plateful of thinner wedges, and Gladys set them down in front of Filbert punctilious horse feathers. Filbert speared a wedge with his fork, peered at it, and took a teeny tiny nibble. Still too thick and bland as burlap, he said, rolling his eyes and pushing his plate away. Well, flying flapjacks, said Gladys. The customer at table five is sending his plate back again. Fussy, 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 muttered George, who proceeded to cook a plateful of even thinner wedges, this time with an extra splash of salt. When Gladys set the potatoes down in front of Filbert punctilious horse feathers, Filbert speared a wedge with his fork, peered at it, nibbled it, and then took a bean-sized bite. Still too thick, still bland and undercooked, he said, puffing his cheeks out and pushing his plate away. Gladys let out a tut-tut and a tisk-tisk and a snort, then picked up the plate and returned to George's kitchen a third time. This cannot be said George. Everyone loves my spuds. They are scrumptious. They are succulent. They are sublime. Not according to finicky, persnickety, filbert, punctilious horse feathers, said Gladys. Now, George was known to his customers to be a bit of a prankster, and his daily menu was evidence of his lively sense of humor. To draw a laugh or two, George often listed menu items that were, shall we say, somewhat unusual. Today's specials, stewed skunk in sassafras sauce, pickled possum pancakes, grilled groundhog in croot. So, in the spirit of playfulness, George took one more potato and carefully balanced it on his chopping block. With his finest, sharpest knife, he slowly shaved it into the thinnest, slimmest, and trimmest of slices. He heated a ladleful of lard in his pan and fried the slices until they were so crispy they crackled, and then he showered them with salt. Let's see how Mr. Horse Feathers fancies these spuds, said George with a wink. With a wisp of a smile, Gladys set the plate down in front of Filbert Punctilious Horse Feathers. Filbert turned the plate this way, then that way. He tried spearing one of the potato slices, but it splintered. So Filbert put down his fork, and with his fingers, he stacked the slices until they teetered. Then he cracked one, and he snapped one. Only after that did Filbert punctilious horse feathers pop one into his mouth. Perfection, he proclaimed. And before he could say, 
prickly porcupine pie. Filbert had munched, crunched, and gobbled up every last morsel. I guess the joke is on you, said Gladys when she returned the empty plate to George. Fire up that frying pan one more time. I want to try those for myself. So with a swish of his apron and a tap to a chef's hat, George did exactly that. Why, my taste buds are tap dancing, exclaimed Gladys after sampling George's new creation. Delectable and delicious, declared George after he too ate a few. I'll call them crumbs crisp crispies and put a plateful on every table. Word spread, and before long, people from all over the country and far, far beyond were clamoring for George's new concoction, which came to be known as potato chips. Potato chips.